um, just busy. I think I'm patient. Um, I feel like I'm caring. Um, I didn't get a lot of patience from my parents growing up, so I try to be patient with my children. Um, a lot of times I am tired. I'm hardworking. I pour my heart and soul into the little people that are in my charge, and uh, I really want to do my best for them at all times, so I'm really hard on myself sometimes. Man, I struggle with giving them the time that they deserve. Like, I feel like sometimes they get the leftovers of my time. And I want them, I don't want them to rely on electronics. I don't want them to rely on what the world says about them. But I feel like a lot of times the world gives them a lot more time than I give them. always trying to do what's right by them, always wondering if what I'm doing is the right thing for them. Um, I work really hard and I love my job. Sometimes I worry that I spend too much time doing my job and not enough time being a mom. Knowing um, if I am being too soft about things or too lenient, letting them get away with too many things, or if I'm being too hard on certain things, I feel like that's my biggest struggle, like never quite knowing which, like which I'm doing, I don't know. I had a friend once tell me that at the end of the day, to think of a to-da list instead of a to-do list. And that was a super hard thing to do because at the end of the day, even as a mom, I will look and think about all the things that I didn't do right. Here's that. I'm gonna get back behind the cameras. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And a kiss. Love. A hug and a kiss. And also love. She always taking care of all of us. Five is a lot of kids, so she does a good job. Um, she's smart. She's wonderful. She loves us a lot. There's too many things. I love my mom 10,000. I love her 2,000. <laughs> because she's my mom and she's always there for me. She always knows what to say. She always helps me with problems. She gives me good advice. It's because she's the best at taking care of us. Nobody could beat her. Our dad could. Well, he does it with mom. There we go. There I am. Happy Mother's Day to those of you that are here that are mothers. Happy, happy being a woman for the rest of you that are women. <laughs> clarify. Uh, it's a great day here at Real Life Church. I want to just, A, I'm going to have to ask for some help. Uh, I have been married to my best friend for a long time. Uh, we're going to, this October will be 28 years uh, that we will be married. 20, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, but I need your help today. Um, 
my wife has a problem. And it has to do with small bovine creatures. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, that's a cow. I drive a black Chevy pickup truck. It is parked in the backyard because that's where we as volunteers park to make space for you out here. If you were in the back at any point during this service or the next service and you see my wife taking said cow, putting it in the back of that black pickup truck, I need you to intervene. <laughs> I need you to get in the way. Okay? Carissa and Devin, who brought some of the cows, they've told me that they're not going to stop it if it happens, and I need more help, okay? Uh, she loves those little things. I've tried to convince her that we live right in the middle of town, and that doesn't work. She has then told me that we will put that dude right in the house. No, we won't. Uh, <laughs> how many of you know the following responses, unless she says so, Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I hope you have a good day today, moms, ladies. Again, we celebrate you. Uh, we, we try to do our best. I really try to do my best on, on Mother's Day, Father's Day, with the understanding that for some people this season is, is not easy. Some people this season, the, 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 today is, is not a, it's not a day of celebration. It's a day of continual thoughts of a lot of different things. But for a lot, it is. It is a day of celebration. My mom, today is actually the six-year anniversary of my mom's funeral. And, uh, and so you're like, wow, that brought a wet blanket on the day. No, no, you don't understand. My mom was awesome. And I am so thankful for the time that I had with my mom because I, I've reached that place in my journey to where now I don't look back at what I don't have. I look back at what God gave me and the memories of those people that have gone before. And I also look forward with the knowledge that one day I'll see her again. And, and I will, I'll just say straight up, I will hear my mom before I see my mom in heaven. Because she had one of those voices. And, uh, and so like, if you're here today and you're, and you're a mom or you're just somebody that has influence, I want to say thank you. Uh, I want to tell you, we're kicking off a brand new series called May We Honor. And the whole month of May, we're going to just dive into honoring. Because the Bible talks about honor and the word honor in the Bible is to give weight and you're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I don't need any more, Pastor Vince. But this word is to, to if, you were, if we were to kind of phrase it in today's language, it would be what we're speaking about, we don't take lightly. It's something that's, that has weight. Um, I, I believe that when, if you watch any country that has a hierarchy or that has a king or monarchy, there, there's a king that's there. Something interesting happened when the king walks in the room, the room stops. Well, because that's the king, because that's the, no, it's because there is weight on who that is. And so the month of May, we want to spin that. It's the, the, the Hebrew word is kavad, the weight of, of honor. And so we're going to be honoring today, uh, ladies and, and all of you that have influence, okay? We've got, like Aaron said, we've got farmer's market stuff out there. We're trying to have a little fun. But the sermon today, I pray, is challenging for all of you. Uh, next week, we're honoring our grads. Everybody say amen to graduation. Yeah. Some of you made it. Some of you aren't sure yet. And either way, we're really thankful that you're here today. And next week, we hope that you're here so we can celebrate you. If you are here and you say, hey, we want to celebrate our grad. We've got a son or a grandson or a granddaughter grand, or a daughter that is graduating. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now, we don't know about it. And so we, we can't honor them if we don't know about it. So please find the counter outside or out front. Let us know. There's a little form you fill out that way. We want to bless them. We want to honor them and, and recognize them next week. So please let us know today uh, so that we can be prepared for next Sunday to honor our graduates. And there's a bunch. And that if you're graduating college, if you're graduating high school, all right, we, we want to celebrate that because it's a big deal. Like, I'm thankful I made it. And if you're here and you made it, let me just be the first to tell you, it only gets harder from here. <laughs> hey, it just does. Uh, but, but if you look around, you realize you're not alone in doing it. And that should bring great comfort. And so that's our series in the final Sunday in May. We will celebrate and honor those who have given the ultimate cost 
for our country to allow us the freedom to do what we get to do here on Sundays and every day. And so that'll be on Memorial Weekend. And so we challenge you to come back, be with us as we just honor the entire month of May in a series called May We Honor. And so as you, I want you to turn with me in your Bible to 1 Samuel, if you would. 1 Samuel chapter 1, we're going to be right in the beginning of this book. And And I want to just give you maybe some challenges today. I'm going to give you an encouragement, but a challenge in the same time. As I said, I want to talk to everybody. I'm going to preach about a mom today, but I want to talk to anybody and everybody that has influence over someone or something, whether this is a coach in your life or maybe you're a coach in someone's life. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a next door neighbor. Maybe you're just a good friend. I, I can remember my mom was amazing. My mom would kick me in the kitchen if I needed it. Literally, I have a great story about that if you've never heard it. She was washing dishes, so her hands were occupied, so she just went, boom. I was was beating up my sister, and so she got me. I stopped beating up my sister the moment my mom kicked me. Um, But then also, I've had great teachers in my life. I've had great Sunday school teachers in my life. My wife, Jennifer, is an amazing person in my life. My daughters are amazing people in my life. And so, like, I've had other people that have been and poured great influence into me. Uh, anybody have a, a, a cheering, like a cheerleader mom? Like, they were the best cheerleader of your life? That was your mom? Hands up, that was you? Not, not so many of you. Sorry. Um, my mom was, and to the point where it was graphic sometimes, uh, my, like I said, my mom, I could hear her cheer no matter where we were at. My daughter, Vanessa, ended up playing college basketball. And so first time I took my mom to a college basketball game, she figured that we were at a different level of play. So her cheering had to go to a different level. And so my daughter was a point guard. And what didn't take long where she was a freshman point guard and she's coming down the, the side of the court and she's about to break right at the elbow to drive in to score. And the power forward from the other team stepped in front of Vanessa and went, boom, hit her right, with, right in the chest with an elbow and dropped her, just checked her right there. My little mom, she's about this big, she come up and nearly went sideways in that place. And I said, mom, you, so my mom begins cheering the rest of the game. Vanessa, you break her legs. <laughs> I'm like, mom, you can't do that. Like, it's basketball, and she's a point guard, so you can say, like, break her ankles, mom, and now you can do that. And she's like, that's not what I want. <laughs> she hit Vanessa, and I, wanted, and I want retribution. Uh, and I love that she was always in her corner, even if it was a little unorthodox and terrifying for everybody else around. Uh, but that's who she was. And so if you're that person in somebody's life, you're the cheerleader, you're the person that, that holds them up, that, that makes sure they have someplace safe to be. And again, that's been a lot of different people in my life. I've had pastors that have sat me in the basement of their church offices and just looked at me as I wept on their couch and just been a safe place for me to be. This isn't just a mom sermon today. So if you're here and you're worried about that, I pray you hear what I hope God is speaking to you. So let's dive in. First Samuel. Chapter 1, starting with verse 9. This, let me give you some backstory. So we're going to speak about a lady named Hannah. And Hannah is married to a good guy named Elkaniah. And Elkaniah, just so that, that name is available for any mothers that are expecting, Elkaniah. You can call him Elk for short. It should be great. Okay? And so she was married to Elkaniah. Great marriage. The problem in the marriage was that Hannah was not able to have children. And it, it bothered her, distressed her that she couldn't. And so Elkaniah, uh, they, they just, they walked through their relationship. He was very loyal, very heartfelt to Hannah through this process, continually raised her up, continually showed love and care to her in the situation. But it was a situation that wasn't, it just wasn't good enough for Hannah. And so year in, year out, they would come to the temple at Shiloh and they would offer their sacrifice and they would offer their sacrifice and they would offer their sacrifice. And it got to a point where one year, Hannah comes to the temple to offer her sacrifice and that's where we pick up. It said, now after they had eaten and drank at Shiloh, Hannah rose. 
Now, I, Eli, the priest, was sitting on a seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. Now, if you can see this or you can picture this, you got Eli, the priest, you're just kind of sitting outside the temple. It's the evening time. He's taking a breather. I don't know what he was doing out there, sitting out there. But they'd already ate it's past dinner time. He's just chilling outside, and he looks across, and he sees Hannah. The Bible goes on telling us that Hannah, in verse 10, was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. Hannah was deeply distressed, something heavy going on in Hannah's heart, and she prayed bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. Now you have to understand a little more biblical context to understand why she said, and I won't cut his hair. Okay, there's some biblical context there as being separated for the Lord. And so Hannah says, this is what I'll do. And verse 12 picks up, and this is how we know Eli is a dude. Okay, how many men in the house say amen? amen. I'm about to preach to you for a minute, okay? And Eli, as she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. That's what it says. Because Hannah was speaking in her heart and only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. <laughs> Therefore, Eli assumed her to be a drunken woman. <laughs> Fellas, uh, let me back up. Ladies, has your man ever just assumed something so wrong and then said something about it? Yep. We have a gift. <laughs> we sometimes don't think. Can I get an amen? amen? You're like, I know you ladies, you're like, how is that possible? <laughs> like, we don't understand that because we think all the time. Men do not. We have a gift. We have this ability to disappear into nothingness in this chasm of our brain. And it's refreshing there. <laughs> Fellas, am I wrong? No, Ladies, is it frustrating? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, Eli's a dude. <laughs> Because he didn't, that, what I love about it, it was, there was not a moment where Eli goes up and goes, excuse me, ma'am, is everything okay? No, he didn't do that. That's what a lady would have done. Sissy, you all right? <laughs> Eli goes, she's drunk. <laughs> she's drunk. It's right there in scripture. So Eli said to her, how long? Will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away, woman. <laughs> this is a great opening line right there, right? She comes back and she answers. She says, no, my Lord. I love this phrase. I am a woman troubled in spirit. And I have drank neither wine nor strong drink. Listen to the wording. But I have been pouring out my soul to the Lord. Eli, huh, Eli immaturely or assumptively or whatever word you want to put on it, assumed she was pouring something into her and here she was just pouring out of her before God. She said, I'm not drinking. I'm just in distress and I'm praying for something that's big. I'm praying for something that's heavy. I'm praying for something that has me a little bit rattled. I'm just praying. And so he says to her, finally, he, he realizes, because she said, I haven't drank. I've been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Please do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. I'm not out here just drinking outside the temple. I'm out here pouring my guts out to God. For all along, I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and my vexation, out of my, the heaviness of my heart. Then Eli answered, go in peace. May the Lord hear you. 
May the Lord grant your petition that you have made to him. I love that Eli doesn't ask what the petition was. He was probably a little scared. <laughs> he was like, my bad. Whatever the Lord needs to do in your life, we'll let him do that. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad. And they rose early in the morning and they worshiped before the Lord. And then they went back to her house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked of him from the Lord. A couple of things, a big, big, broad thing I want to lean into today is I want, you to, I want you to know that no matter what influence you have over people in your life, whether you feel like you have any or maybe you don't even know, I'm going to ask you to do a couple things today. The big thing is this the overarching thing. I'm going to dig into, eat, I'm going to dig into it a little bit and give you two things. But the big thing is I want you to pray. I want you to pray for the things in your life, the people in your life that God has set before you. The opportunities for influence, I want you to pray that God would give you the opportunities, that you would pray correctly, that you would pray towards something, that you would be praying that God, who is the God of everything, is able to answer the prayer the way God wants to answer the prayer. And I need everybody to say amen on that. And the reason I say I need you to say amen on that is because most of the time when we in our current culture pray, we pray so that we get our answer. I don't know how much time we spend praying seeking the Lord's answer. I'll touch on that in just a second. But we see Hannah do a couple things here in her prayer. She goes to Eli and she says, Lord, let your, let your favor be upon me. And, and I pray that the Lord hears his servant. She goes home. Her and Elkaniah do what you have to do in order to make a baby. And then she has a baby. She has the baby. She begins to wean the baby. In the process of weaning the baby, Elkanah goes to the temple. He says, are you coming? She said, I ain't coming yet. The baby's not ready to, to go. And so he says, I'll leave you here. And she continues to wean the baby until it is of age. And then she takes it. And say, what does this have to do with all of us? I think we sometimes miss the most powerful thing that God has given us as a tool. And that most powerful thing that God has given us as a tool is prayer. And our culture has convinced us that so long as we do everything else that we can do, then we can default to prayer. Then we default to prayer. Like, I've tried it all. I guess I'll go to the Lord. It's such a backwards mentality. It's such a misuse of resources. And yet we still fall into the trap of doing it. We still fall into this trap of, of praying later. Rather, I, well, I'm going to try to fix it. I'm going to try to do my thing. I'm going to try to put all the pieces together. I'm going to try to make it right. I'll make, how many of you ever say that? I'll make it right. How many of you know most things you, don't, you can't make right? Especially if you've already done it. Like you, you made it. You can't unmake it and make it right. You can maybe repent of it and do something different going forward, but that's made. But we tend to go that route instead of first going, Lord. It's one of the reasons I love the book of Habakkuk. In the book of Habakkuk, it has Habakkuk the prophet. And it says, I will, it's my favorite thing in regards to vision. Because Habakkuk says, I will set myself upon the tower so that I might hear what God has to say to me, but that I also might hear what I should be saying to him. And I sat, every time I read that, it convicts my heart, and I wonder how much time I spend going, Lord, what should I actually be praying today? What should I actually be asking you for? Now, Believe me, God has the system taken care of because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in groans at which we cannot understand. And I've heard people, I love people, people go, oh, that's the gift of tongues, Pastor Vince. I'm like, I, I, what I think it is, is I think sometimes I pray for Vince stuff and the Holy Spirit takes it to God and goes, that's not what he meant. <laughs> How many of you know, or how many of you are thankful that God gave you what you needed and not what you prayed for? Yes. Whew. 
I know there's been times the Holy Spirit's got to heaven and went, this guy. Again, he's praying. God, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. He's been praying for this, but he needs this. And God goes, that's why I have you. I need, we need to clarify this. Some people praying that their kids would act straight. They'll be, come on, I need you to straighten up. And God's going, that's a great prayer, except the problem is, is, is your controlling nature and your short temper is why they are acting up. And thank God for the Holy Spirit that takes the proper thing to the throne rather than the thing we thought needed to go to the throne. God, I want you to deliver me. I want you to give me this. And the thing that you really need is this so that you'll be ready for that when it comes. I, I remember when we started Real Life Church, I was praying. And I was praying for stuff, but I wasn't praying for the right stuff, Tim. I was just praying that God would bless the church and we'd see growth and we'd see people and we'd see, we'd see all kinds of great. I wanted people to come in and I knew it was just a pawn shop, but it was our pawn shop. And I wanted people to come into pawn shop. And that's what I wanted. God, just send people. Lord, if you'll just let me preach. That was, I told our staff, our team, we didn't have a staff, we had a team. I, I told them, I'm like, look, I don't care what the chairs look like. I don't care what the rooms look like. I just got to preach. That's what I'm praying. Lord, just get me to the place I can preach. And the first Sunday, people came in, and I started seeing faces of people, and I thought, I don't know what to do with them. And I prayed a prayer that has changed my life. I remember that day, when people walked out that day, I walked back into that little room of that church, and I said, Lord, I don't, I don't need to know anything else, but can you help me see that they hurt And it changed everything. Changed everything in my heart, Joe. And that's for the next two years and even beyond that, even today, the next two years, I'd have people come in broken. I'd be sitting outside the church building, leaning up against that metal building, just weeping with a dope dealer sitting here in a forced rehab and we're crying outside in the sidewalk about what Jesus can do in his life if he would just let me. I'm sitting there talking with people that are asking me, how come God hates me so much? And my heart would break. And God said, this is what you ask for. <laughs> I was kidding. I was kidding. And man, did I realize, did I learn and did I grow that that which I prayed for, the Holy Spirit took to God and delivered me the thing that I absolutely needed the most in order to love a church the way a pastor should love a church. I'm not perfect at it. It's one of the reasons I ask you, if you've talked with me very long, I'll ask you, hey, how you doing? And you may go, I'm good, but I'm quickly going to go, are you lying to me? Are you sure? Because we'll say I'm good, right? How many of you know we're good at that? We have, we, the, our whole world will be falling apart. Falling apart. If somebody comes in, we're like, I'm good. Fine, I'm fine. Push all that stuff down. But if you ask the second question, if you ask the second question, Hey, are you really okay? Because it's okay to not be. Sometimes you just need to know there's a safe place where you don't have to be okay. And the Lord taught me to ask that question, and he taught me in that season to just pray for people and to just legitimately pray for them. Now, I throw people all the time because I just call people randomly. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know why I'm calling you. I'm just supposed to be praying for you, and I just wanted you to know today I prayed for you. Is there anything specific I can pray for you about? People are like, you seriously, seriously, just calling me out of the blue? Just calling you out of the blue. Why? Because I love you and I need to pray for you and I don't know what to pray. So what? It's one of my favorite things to do because people don't expect it. Why? Because we've bought into the idea that prayer is the last thing we do. 
Hannah goes, I'm praying. I'm praying. I don't care if I look like a fool. He thinks I'm drunk out here in the middle of the courtyard. I don't care. I'm praying. My soul is distressed. My heart is broken for the thing that I need or that I seek and I desire in my life. There's something interesting that happens. You see Hannah, she prays hard for this. She's praying hard for it. Do you pray hard for the things in your life? Like when's the last time you wept over something that you were praying about? Where you had nothing left but to get on the floor on your face before God and go, I have no way to fix this. It's beyond my strength or ability, God. And so I'm giving it to you. Whatever you choose to do with it, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to love you because I know you love me. She prayed hard. My favorite thing that she did well, she prayed crazy. Any y'all ever pray crazy stuff? I pray stuff like, Lord, give my kids good spouses. You're like, that's not crazy. Have you met some of the people in this world? Some crazy people out there. It's a thin gap to hit where you can get a good one. No offense. I'm sure a lot of you are amazing. I just don't know if I want you marrying my kids. <laughs> Some of you are like, I don't, did he just insult me? No, I didn't, I promise. You can marry whoever you want. When's the last time you prayed something crazy and believed God? Now, here's the thing there's a catch. There's a catch. There's a catch to the crazy. Maybe that's a t shirt, Jared. There's a catch to the crazy. Yeah, I've seen you already thinking about it back there. Hannah only prays. Catch this. She only is able to pray, Lord, give me a son. When she is accepted in her heart that she will give it back to the Lord. Some of you, the reason you haven't received what you've been praying for is because you're still praying for the wish and not the glory. You're praying to receive your answer not God to receive the glory for the answer. Hannah, Hannah, her whole life was here. Her whole life was here, aching to be this, to fulfill this. And she gets to a place and she says, Lord, if you'll bless me with this, I will give it back to you. So not only do you have to pray hard, not only have to pray a little crazy, but you have to pray letting go of the answer and trusting that I'm going to return it to God. The Bible says that when the time came and the seasons passed and she gave birth to a son named Samuel and she weaned him and finally there was a day she took him back. She took him back to the temple and she got right back in front of Eli, that guy that called her a drunken woman out in the middle of the courtyard. This is what I prayed for. And God was good. And God will get the glory. Hannah, what about you? Oh, no, no. I'm good. Why? Because that was my goal, that God would get the glory. And Hannah would come back every time there was sacrifice. The Bible teaches us that she would come back every time there was opportunity to be at the temple. Hannah was there. She trusted that the promise she made God was worth following through with. She had to let go. Some of you are in seasons in your parenting right now where you're in seasons, and I get, boy, do I understand seasons. I have three adult kids. I have two with children. I have two teenage boys, one which starts driving in two weeks. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> and I have a seven-year-old. I am an I am, I am in multiple seasons at all times it has felt like for the last 20 years. But I know the season of going, I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. One of the principles I've been teaching my team this last two weeks is that I can be here for you, but I will not be with you. Because if I'm with you, it's likely that I'm going to do it. Anybody, same personality type as mine? 
If I'm with you, I'm going to do it. And so my role now is to be for you. I'm here for you. If you need to make a call, I got you. But I can't be with you. Same season I'm walking in with some of my kids right now. Dad, what do we do? Whatever you want. It's not what I was hoping for. It's what you're getting. What do you think we should do? I think you should do whatever you want. Dad, I love you. But at some point, you're going to have to learn to trust the God that is within you. Trust the discernment that is within you. So it's tough. Parents, influence people who you are. You say, Pastor Vince, that's not me. So I don't know how I get to do this, how I get to pray for this. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a story. Yesterday, I was here at the church. I'm going to close with this. Yesterday, I was here at the church. And there's a young lady that attends church here. Her name is Candy. Candy has served in our children's ministry and different ministries. Some of you know Candy. And Candy lost her child several years back. It's tragic. She lost her son. And we were here yesterday, and there's a bunch of church kids running around in this yard, getting everything set up for the cows and the mochas and the whatever was else was going on. So there's all the church kids running around, and Candy was here, and she was helping, and she 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 looked in the yard, and she was like, oh, I just love this. This, this, this kinship these kids have. And I'm like, yeah, most of them don't know an existence without one another. Since they began, they've always just been together. And she said, I just, I just wish that I, I just wish I had a child to add to that. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. She looked at me and I could tell this weekend is one of those that's tough for her. And I said, Candy, I need you. How long have you been coming to church here? She told me several years. I said, okay, so Candy, I need, you, I need you to go with me for a second. I need you to understand your influence. Because just like Vanessa and Beckham and Blake and, 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 and Lily and, and Anna are over there playing and Wyatt and, and Kaylee, just, as they're, just they're over there playing. And I said, do you see Anna over there? She said, yeah. I said, do you realize that the very first memories that Anna is going to be able to grab as an adult, you will be in them. You will be in them. My daughter's memories of growing up in church and dancing around in children's ministry or high-fiving somebody, it's going to be you. So don't think for a second that God hasn't given you an opportunity to be influential and have just as much in, in the cultivation and the development of these children and the generations and generations and generations and generations. So I challenged her. Pray hard. Pray crazy. And when the time comes, Open your hands, let the prayer go to God and let him get the glory for it. Bow with me, church, if you would. Father, I love you so much. I love looking around the room and seeing all the faces. As I stand where I stand, Lord, I can see faces that influence other faces in the room. Impact that, that people have had. I think about my little girl. And God, I am reminded almost daily that I do not have the capability to be all that she needs. I just don't. And instead of me feeling less, you and your grace and your wisdom and your mercy and your love for me and Bryn 
provide a people, a group, individuals that love her as much as I do, but differently. And I'm so, so thankful. May we never, ever forget the influence you've given all of us. May we never take it for granted. And may we never lessen it by saying, but it's not this. And Father, we'll give you all the glory, the honor, the praise, because you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. amen.